Hi everyone, this is Jenny, and welcome back to the Westbound Maths channel. In today's video, we are going to preview the differentiation part 2 lecture of our complete A-level pure math crash course on Udemy. Before we start, let's quickly recap what we learned in the previous lecture. We started off with going through the definition of derivative, differentiation, and their graphic representation. We then move on to the two main topics under differentiation, the first one being the methods of differentiation that is listed on the left-hand side of the table, including chain rule, which is the method to differentiate composite function, product rule, how to differentiate the product of two functions, quotient rule, how to differentiate a fraction or say a division of two functions, and then how to use inverse functions and connected rate of change to find the derivative of a function that is otherwise difficult to find. We also looked at how to differentiate trigonometric functions as part of the preview. So in today's video, we're going to look at the last two types of functions to differentiate, that is parametric equations and implicit functions. For those of you familiar with our videos, you know there are usually three parts to each topic. We start off by going through the key concept and definition within that topic, and then jump straight into a past exam question to look at how these concepts are applied. You will then be given a classroom exercise whereby I would ask you to pause the video, make attempt at the question yourself, and then resume the video for us to go through the solutions together. There is a separate video that goes into details on how you can fully utilize this course. I'll put the link up above, so check it out if you're interested. Also remember to subscribe to our channel if you like this video, so you get notified every time we put out a new preview or tutorial video. Now, without further ado, let's get started with differentiation part two. Before we look at how to differentiate parametric equations, let's recap what it is. So a parametric equation is where the x and y coordinates are both written in terms of a third variable, commonly denoted as t or theta. We can convert them back into the Cartesian formula we are quite familiar with, consisting just of the x and y variable. So in a parametric equation, it's usually given in this form. Your x is given as a function of the third variable t, and so is your y is given as another function of the third variable t. So we know there is some kind of relationship between x and y but we don't know what that relationship is explicitly. So how do we find dy dx in this case? We can find it through the third variable t. So from the parametric equation, we can work out dx dt simply f dash x. We can also work out dy dt, which is g dash x. And by connecting these two fractions, I will be able to figure out what is my dy dx. My dy dx is simply my dy dt divided by my dx dt. Why can I do that? Because my dt will cancel out, giving me back my original fraction, which is dy dx. In this case, it's just equal to g dash t divided by f dash t. Why can I do this kind of operation to my derivative? It's worth noting here that a derivative is no different than a common fraction a divided by b here. So we can do all sorts of operation to a fraction we do to derivative. I can expand my fraction a over b into a over c times c over b. I can do that because the c in the uh, denominator and the c in my numerator would cancel out, giving me back my original a over b, which is also the case with my derivative. So now we found how to find the derivative of parametric equation. It's given in these two formulas, which are really the same formula, just represented differently. It is worth noting here that the derivative dy dx of parametric equations can be written in terms of the third variable t. This is different from what we saw before. When we are trying to derive the derivative of an explicit function, y is equal to f of x, we said that its derivative should always be given in terms of x. That rule no longer applies to parametric equations. So let's look at an example together. 
Example 1 says that a curve has parametric equations x is equal to cos t and y is equal to a half sine 2t, whereby my t is between 0 and 2 pi. Part 1 of the question says find an expression for dy dx in terms of t. Okay, so let's apply what we just saw. We can find dy dx by connecting dy dt and dx dt. So dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. Here, my dy dt is the derivative of this. We should note here that we need to apply the chain rule because this is a composite function. 2t is a function of t, and then sine 2t is another function. So here, the numerator is a half times cos 2t times 2, divided by my denominator is the derivative of cos t, which is equal to minus sine t. So this simplifies to cos 2t divided by minus sine t. So you can see that this is the answer to part 1 of the question. Moving on to part 2 of the question, it says that find an equation of the tangent to the curve at point A where t is equal to pi over 6. Remember, there are two things we need in order to find an equation of a line. Let's go back one step. So there are two things we need in order to find the equation of any line. It doesn't have to be a tangent line. It can be a normal line. It can be any line. The first thing is that we need a point on this line. We need to know the coordinate of the point on this line. And the second thing we need is the gradient of the line. Once you have these two things, you can work out your equation of the line is simply equal to x minus x1. Right. So bearing that in mind, let's have a look at those two things we need in order to solve this question. So it says, find the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point A. Right. So the question already given us a point. So the first thing we need is the point A. Do we know its coordinate? Not yet. But the question told us when we are at the point A, t is equal to pi over 6. So we can plug in t is equal to pi over 6 into my original parametric equation. And that will tell me the x and y coordinate of this point A. So we did that here. Once you've done that, you should find out that the coordinate of point A is this. And the second thing we need is the gradient of the line. So remember, first derivative is equal to the gradient of the tangent line at that given point. We found out that dy dx is equal to this formula here. We just need to evaluate it at A in order to find the gradient of the tangent line at the point A. We know that when we're at the point A, t is equal to pi over 6, given to us by the question. So again, we plug in t is equal to pi over 6 into my dy dx, and that will give you that my first derivative, or my gradient, is equal to minus 1. So now I have both conditions required to find the equation of a line. I can just plug them back into the formula we saw just now. And of course, you can tidy it up a little bit, and that will get you to the final solution y is equal to minus x plus 3 times square root 3 divided by 4. Now you will get an opportunity to practice yourself. You will see it on screen, classroom exercise number 1. Please pause this video, make an attempt at it yourself. Feel free to use the notes we've covered so far. Once you've done it, then resume this video, we'll go through the classroom exercise 1 and carry on with the rest of the lecture. Now let's take a look at the classroom exercise one together. The question says that the curve C was parametric equations x is equal to a sine squared t and y is equal to a times cos t, whereby t is between 0 and half pi, and a is a positive constant. The point P lies on the curve C and has coordinates 3 over 4 a and a half a. Part 1 of the question asks us to find dy dx, given your answer in terms of t. So we can find dy dt first and dx dt, and by connecting them, we will be able to find our dy dx as we've seen before. So here, 
my dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. My dy dt is the derivative of a times cos t, which is equal to a times minus sine t. And my dx dt here is equal to 2 times a sine t times cos t. Here we apply the chain rule. It's very important to note here that sine t is the first function and sine t squared is the second function. So we're working with the composite function here. So my denominator is 2a times sine t times cos t. I can cancel out my a from the numerator and the denominator, and I can also cancel out my sine t, leaving us with minus 1 over 2 times cos t. So that's the solution to part 1 of the question. Let's take a look at part 2 of the question, which asks us to find an equation of the tangent to c at p. We know that there are two things we need in order to find the equation of any line. The first one is the coordinates of a point on that line. In this case, that is given to us. We're working with point P, and the coordinates of point P is given to us, which is 3 over 4a and a half a. So we already have the first condition needed. How about the second condition? We need to find out the gradient of the tangent line, which is just equal to dy dx at point p. We have worked out before that dy dx is equal to minus 1 over 2 times cos t. In order to evaluate this, we need to work out what is our cos t at point p. How do we do that? Well, the question has given us some clue. It's told us that y is equal to a times cos t and it's also told us that at point P, this is my y coordinate. So we know that at the point P, my a times cos t is equal to a half a. Again, we can cancel out a on both sides of the equation. Why can we do that? It's because a is a positive constant. You can't do that unless you are sure that a is not equal to zero. So here we have cos t is equal to a half. Let's plug that value back into our first derivative, and that gives us minus 1 over 2 times a half, which evaluate to minus 1. So now we have both conditions required in order to find the equation of a line. We can just plug them back into the equation, and then there we go, we have the equation of the line. So here we have the coordinates, and we also have the gradient of the line at point P, combining them together, this is our final answer. Let's now move on to implicit functions. Before we look at implicit function differentiation, let's ask ourselves, what is an implicit function again? It is usually given in terms of both the dependent and independent variables, such as this function on screen, y squared plus 2xy minus 3x is equal to 0. This is quite different than the explicit functions we are familiar with, whereby my y is usually given as a function of x. In this case, even though my relationship between x and y is not given explicitly, I still know that there is some kind of relationship between them. So I assume that y is equal to g of x. Now let's have a look at the first term, y squared y squared essentially became g of x squared. So if I want to differentiate y squared with respect to x, my question became d dx y squared became d dx g of x squared, which here I need to apply the chain rule because it's a composite function became 2 times g of x times g dash x. Let's now put it back in terms of y, whereby my g of x is equal to y by definition, and my g dash x is just equal to dy dx. Because here, we assume that y is equal to gx, 
So dy dx is just equal to g dash x. So now we've worked out that the derivative of y squared with respect to x is equal to 2y times dy dx. This is essentially a chain rule. What we did here is we differentiated y squared with respect to y first, and we get to 2y, and then we can times it by dy dx. So we can apply this method when we differentiate terms involving y in implicit functions. So here are the rules. When I'm trying to differentiate a function of y with respect to x, I can differentiate it with respect to y first, which give me f dash y, and I times it by dy dx as per the chain rule. And here is similar when I'm trying to differentiate y to the power of n with respect to x, I differentiate it with respect to y first, which gives me n times y to the power of n minus 1. And again, I need to times it by dy dx because we're trying to find the rate of change of this y to the power of n with respect to x. And here, I'm trying to find the derivative of the product x times y with respect to x. So here, we need to apply the product rule. The product rule states that I need to copy down the first function, which is x, times it by the derivative of the second function. So dy by dy just gives me 1, and I need to times it by the derivative dy dx. So that's the first half of the product rule. And the second half requires me to copy down the second function, which is y, and times it by the derivative of the first function, which is x. So dx by dx is just equal to 1. So the derivative of xy with respect to x is thus equal to x times dy by dx plus y. The one thing to note here is that the derivative of implicit functions can be written in terms of both x and y. This is different from the explicit function derivatives we saw before, which can only be given in terms of x. Let's now look at an example. The question says, find dy dx for the function y cubed plus 3xy squared minus 3x cubed is equal to 3. In order to find dy dx, we can differentiate both sides of the equation. So the left hand side became d dx y cubed plus 3x y squared minus 3x cubed. And the left hand side of the equation became d dx 3. Now the left hand side is essentially implicit function differentiation. So the first term y cubed is a term involving y. So we differentiate it with respect to y first, which is equal to 3y squared, but we need to times it by dy dx. And the second term is essentially a product of two functions. Let's call 3x my first function and y squared my second function. So now we need to apply the product rule. Let's copy down the first function 3x, and we need to times it by the derivative of the second function y squared which is equal to 2y times dy dx. And now the second half of my product rule, I copy down the second function, which is y squared, and times it by the derivative of the first function, which is equal to 3. And lastly, the derivative of 3x cubed is just equal to 9x squared. The right-hand side of the function is a derivative of a constant. And we know that is 0, because a constant does not move with respect to x at all. It is always 3. So now we can collect all the terms involving dy dx, and then put them on one side of the equation. So on the left-hand side, we can have 3y squared plus 6xy times dy dx. On the left-hand side, we can move 
these two terms over and it became 9x squared minus 3y squared. So let's isolate dy dx on one side of the equation. That gives us 9x squared minus 3y squared divided by 3y squared plus 6xy. Now we solve the question. And now you have a chance to apply what you just learned in the class exercise 2. Let's now take a look at the classroom exercise 2 together. Part 1 of the question asks us, if given this formula, find dy dx in terms of x and y. So I can see that this is an implicit function because my x and y variables are all integrated versus an explicit function where my y variable is usually given as a function of x. So here I'm going to apply implicit function differentiation. The one thing to note here is that whenever I'm trying to differentiate terms involving y, I'm differentiating those with respect to y first and then times it by dy dx. So here I'm going to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. I'm just copying down both sides of the equation dy dx, x squared plus y squared. Okay, so looking at the left hand side of our equation, I can see that this is the product of two functions. So 1 plus x is my first function, and 2 plus y is my second function. So I know that I need to apply the product rule. So let's copy down the first formula and then differentiate the second one. So 0 plus 1 times dy dx. And then I copy down the second function, which is 2 plus y, and times it by the derivative of the first function. And same on the right hand side. So it's equal to 2x plus 2y, and then I need to times it by dy dx. Okay, so let's simplify this function a little bit. It became 1 plus x dy dx plus just simply 2 plus y, and it's equal to 2x plus 2y times dy dx. And now I want to collect all the terms involving dy dx and isolate them on one side of the equation. So now here I have 1 plus x minus 2y times dy dx is equal to, and then I move all the other terms to the other side of the equation, so it became 2x minus 2 minus y. So here I find my dy dx in terms of x and y. Right, so that's part one. Let's move on to part two. Part two says find the gradient of this function at each of the two points where the curve meets the y-axis. Okay, so before we do that, let's ask ourselves, what is the condition necessary for the curve to meet the y-axis? So let's just draw a very crude axis here. So regardless of the shape of your curve, however it looks, whenever your curve is meeting the y-axis, you can see that my x is equal to 0. So in order for this condition to hold, I know that my x needs to be 0. Okay, so that's the condition. That's the first condition. I know that my x needs to be 0. So let's plug in x is equal to 0 back into our original function. So that became 1 times 2 plus y is equal to 0 plus y squared, which simplifies to 2 plus y is equal to y squared. Hence, we have this function y squared minus y minus 2 is equal to 0. We can complete the bracket here, and that will give us y minus 2 times y plus 1 is equal to 0. Hence, my y is either equal to 2 or is equal to minus 1. And I know that my x is always here, equal to 0. So now I'm working with two points here, 0, 2, and 0, minus 1. So now I figure out the two points where the curve meets the y-axis. I just need to find the gradient. I need to evaluate the gradient at these two points. 
And we have worked out the gradient of this uh, function in part one. So we can see here, we have evaluated these two points and I just need to plug in those values into my dy dx function in part one and that will evaluate to these two. Moving on to part three of the question, which says that show also that there are two points at which the tangents to this curve are parallel to the y-axis. So what does it mean? What are the conditions that these two points need to satisfy in order for their tangent line to be parallel to the y-axis? So let's draw an axis first. So the tangent line needs to be parallel to the y-axis. So it needs to look something like this, right? So for the point on the curve to have such tangent line, the curve maybe looks something like that. We don't know. We don't need to know the shape of the curve in order to solve this question. We just need to know what are the conditions these points need to meet in order for the tangent line to be parallel to the y-axis. So here, to meet that condition, my dx dy needs to equal to 0 at these two points. Why is that the case? Just imagine where anywhere on this line, regardless of your value of y, it can be here, it can be here, doesn't matter how your y moves along this line, your x is always anchored at this point, which is the definition of dx by dy is equal to 0. It means that the rate of change of x with respect to y is 0, meaning that it doesn't matter how your y moves, your x is always unchanged at this point. Okay, so we're quite familiar with this case, whereby you have the same x, y axis, and now I have this curve, and I can see that the tangent to the curve at this point is where my dy dx is equal to zero. Here I follow a similar logic. Regardless of where I am on my x axis, my y coordinate is always anchored here. Hence, my dy dx is equal to zero. All right, so now we know the conditions of these two points is such that my dx dy is equal to zero. So we can find dx dy and then equate that to zero and then solve that question. We have worked out in part one what dy dx is. So here we just need to take the inverse of our results in part one and then we'll get to this formula, which is dx dy is equal to zero. So we have translated this question into solving for the true roots of this equation. So in order for this equality to hold, we know that the numerator will need to equal to zero, and the denominator cannot be zero, otherwise my function is undefined. So here, I take this equality and rewrite x in terms of y. Why do I do that? I do this so that I can plug this formula back into my original question, and then I can solve for y. So this is precisely what we are going to do next. So we take x is equal to 2y minus 1, plug it back into the original implicit function, and now I manage to eliminate my x variable, and leaving only my y variable. So after some algebraic manipulation, you will be able to arrive at this formula, consisting of just the y variable. So now I just need to go on and solve this equation. And in order to show that there are two points whose tangent are parallel to the y-axis, I just need to show that there are two roots to this equation. So that's precisely what we're going to do next. So now I have this formula that I need to solve. And I will try to complete square first, but then I quickly realized I can't complete the squares with whole numbers. So let's move on and use the formula to solve the root. So here, this formula, hopefully we're all very familiar with and we memorized by now because it's not in the formula book. So this is how you find the root, right? Let's plug in the value of a, b, and c here. So a here is equal to three. My b is equal to minus eight. Be very careful on the sign. And my c is equal to one. So let's plug in those values back into my formula and I will manage to evaluate there are two roots for my y, which is equal to 4 plus minus square root 3 over 3. And I can find the corresponding x value, x coordinates. And hence, 
I found the two points such that their tangent line to the curve are parallel to the y-axis. All right, so that concluded the preview part of differentiation part two of our complete A-level pure mass crash course on Udemy. If you like this video and would like to see the rest of the content, I'll put the link to the full course down below in description for you to check out later. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like this so you get notified every time we put out a new video or tutorial. If you have any question relating to today's video or relating to the topic in general, please feel free to put it in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and see you at the next video.